Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be the right to keep and bear arms. I can see there's probably just a ton of trolls just going, oh my god, I can't believe Corey's going to talk about this. So I was like, why am I talking about this? Well, as an American, I want to explain, and having come from a military family, and the fact that pretty much every adult in my family going back over the last 100 years, all my, my father, my uncles, my grandfathers, my great-grandfathers, they've served in every single war that our country has been involved in. And since I was a child, I grew up listening to war stories and hearing about things that happened. I was hanging out with my dad and his girlfriend this past weekend and we were talking about my grandfather when he passed away, the one, his father, the one that was in the Navy during World War II. And when he passed away, my grandfather was a gun enthusiast. And in our family, having guns around was just like having a hammer or nails or a saw around. It was just a tool. And when I was a young kid, when my brother was a young kid, my dad showed us his rifle. He showed us the proper way to handle it and to use it and how to respect it and why you don't point it at people and how to hold it. And he taught us how to be responsible. I mean, when my father and my mother were in high school, they had shooting classes in high school where you learned how to be a marksman and shoot. They had contests. You go to your local hardwood sto hardware store, they sold guns there just like they did hammers and saws and nails and other things. And it really wasn't a big deal. But if you look at what you see in the news and the media today and they just demonize weapons and, oh, we just if we just ban them all, the world will be a safe place. And... The reality is we're, the world is full of evil people who don't respect the freedom of the individual. They live like tyrants. And if you don't know how to defend yourself either physically or by using a weapon, then you in essence are a slave. I mean just look at all the people in the Middle East that are getting lined up in front of troughs or and shot in the back of the head. They're being lined up like sheep because they don't know – they don't have arms. They don't know how to use them. They don't know how to resist and you know, someday, maybe 100 years from now, maybe 1,000 years from now, humanity will totally be at peace with itself and people will only use guns to shoot and you won't have to worry about defending yourself with it. But at the end of the day, what I wanted to talk about today is where it comes from. Why – what is the purpose of the Second Amendment? Why do Americans have them? What is the whole fucking point of it? So I have a quote that I wrote and I got several quotes from our founding fathers and some other very wise people and I'm going to go through this because I teach self-reliance. And if you're going to be a self-reliant human being who can come and go as you please and run your life the way – you want it, you have to have maximum freedom. And in the United States of America, the way our constitution was written was that our freedom, our individual liberty to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is – it doesn't come from the state and it doesn't come from man. It comes from the creator. It's a divine birthright. And the constitution is – in the Second Amendment is – legal written evidence of this fact. As a matter of fact, when we're born, when we're, Americans are born or we're naturalized, we're, we become part, whether you want to agree to it or not or whether you accept your responsibility or not, you become part of the militia of the people. That means it's your job, it's your sacred duty to have a gun, to know how to use it and how to be responsible with it and how to teach your children how to be responsible with it. I mean, there's plenty of in it videos on the internet that you can watch of idiots with fucking guns. They're drinking, they're hanging out around the campfire, they're looking down the barrel of it, they're leaning it up against things, and it falls over and shoots somebody, or the guy goes to pull a gun out of his holster because he's a jackass and he doesn't know how to use it, and he fucking shoots himself. I mean the reality is there are people that just say, I don't like guns, I don't want to use them, and I don't want anything to do with them. That's fine. If people want to abdicate their responsibility and they don't want to have guns, they don't know want to don't want to use them. You got to understand if you're a parent, just like I did, your kids at some point are going to encounter firearms 
more than likely from somebody who's not a very good parent and has them laying around the house and the kids are going to pick them up, start pointing them each at each other, playing cowboys and Indians or whatever they end up playing. If they don't know any better, that's how people get shot and killed because the world is full of stupid, irresponsible people. But at the end of the day, when you're born in the United States as a citizen or you're naturalized as a citizen – and you take the oath of citizenship, guess what? You're not, whether you like it or not, you're part of the militia. And when somebody says, oh, arms are bad and we shouldn't have them, if somebody is kicking down your fucking front door and they have weapons, whether it's knives or guns, or maybe they're just three people that are way bigger than you, if you have nothing to defend yourself and the police are 20 to 30 minutes away, do you really want to take your chances with the people kicking your fucking door in? I mean anybody that says, no, I'm just going to take my chances and when the police finally get there, they're going to be cleaning your carcass up and hauling it off to the morgue. If you're a woman, you're going to get raped. You have no way to resist them. If people want to rob you or kill you, there's not a damn fucking thing that you can do. But if you and everybody in your family is responsible, knows how to use guns and they're treated like a hammer or a nail or a saw or anything else, it won't be a big deal. You guys will be able to defend yourself. There's plenty of news reports. There's plenty of stories that happen pretty much every day of the week where somebody who knows how to use a gun is able to defend themselves. There was I just read an article last week about a woman who had some home invaders kicking her door. They shot her. She was home with her and her baby. She was able to get a hold of her gun and she shot the fucking bastard. They kicked her door in. Now, if she didn't have a gun and didn't know how to use it, she'd just be another chalk statistic, just another dead person and the police trying to figure out who it was that fucking murdered her. I mean that's just reality. Anybody says, yeah, I'm going to wait around for 20, 30 minutes for the cops to get there. There's plenty of good, responsible police officers, especially like the – The chief of police of Detroit, he says, hey, we're 20, 30 minutes away. We're understaffed. We don't have enough officers. Get a gun, know how to use it. If you're ex-military, if you're retired police, get a concealed carry permit. I mean the reality – I posted a quote just recently and I I don't know who it was from. It was originally attributed to George Washington but it said the very atmosphere of firearms anywhere and everywhere restrains evil interference. They deserve a place of honor with all that is good. I wrote a, wrote a quote on this and I'm going to go through it and I've got some other quotes and I want to talk about this in further detail. For those of you who don't want to abdicate your responsibility and don't want to just say, all right, I want the military and the police department to protect me and you know what? I'll take my chances and I'll be completely defenseless and I'll hope the police will get there in time to save me. So the quote that I wrote says, at birth and upon naturalization, every American citizen is granted the right and sacred duty to keep and bear arms, not by any man or the state, but from the creator. The Constitution of the United States of America is simply written legal evidence and guarantor of this divine reality and birthright. If you are an American, you were drafted at birth or upon naturalization as a citizen into the militia of the people, whether you like it or not and whether you accept your responsibility or not. Your legal right, sacred duty and responsibility as a citizen is to keep and bear arms, be safe and responsible in their use and be skillful and competent if it becomes necessary to deploy and discharge them in the use of force. When used properly and responsibly, arms restrain evil interference, level the playing field, equalize everyone physically, and remove any physical advantages another person with evil intentions may have over you. The world is full of evil people. The world is also full of stupid and ignorant people. Wise and smart people own arms, are masters at using them, and teach their children how to use them responsibly and properly at a young age. If your children are responsible, safe, and respectful of the powerful, deadly, and destructive nature of arms, 
then they will be best prepared to defend themselves from evil people and educate stupid people they may encounter who have access to or who possess arms when you are not around on how to be safe with and use them properly. When I was in high school, I think I was I was 16 at the time. I was over at a buddy's house. And again, like I said earlier, I grew up with, with firearms around the house. I mean my grandfather, when he passed away, he had 32 different weapons. He used to shoot them. He took care of them. He was just an enthusiast. And it wasn't a big fucking deal. Like I said, everybody in my family going back over 100 years has learned how to use them as responsible. And it's not a big deal in my family. When I see all this shit in the media about these pussies going, oh, we need to ban these. Oh, we need a gun-free zone. I mean, the bottom line is you look to stats. I mean, Chicago's got the strictest gun laws in the country and they have the most deaths. It's just the fucking way it is. And people can say, hey, I want to wait for the, the popo to show up and save me. And those are usually the same kind of people that want the government to take care of them. What happens? They end up as a statistic and they end up dead or raped or their property stolen. It's just the fucking way it happens to be. I wish we lived in a peaceful world and I wish everybody was nice. I mean you can look at what happened in Paris this past year. Not a single person had a firearm. I mean just think if you had a few dozen people in that theater. Maybe they were ex-military. Maybe ex-police. Maybe they were just a responsible citizen that had a concealed carry weapon. I mean there were only a handful of, of people there but everybody was completely defenseless. So what happened? They lined them up on the floor and they shot them each in the head just like the Nazis did to the Jews and the Russians and anybody else that they encountered that they considered an undesirable. And another reason why us Americans have the right to keep and bear arms is to – as a last resort, an absolute last resort is to protect ourselves from tyranny and government because our founding fathers studied history. In every single form of government in all of human history eventually devolved into a tyrannical government. And when the people are not able to defend themselves, they're either sent in line, sent right off to the ovens or they're lined up in a trench. I mean you can see plenty of videos on the internet of people from ISIS just lining people up by the hundreds and thousands just shooting them. There's nothing that they could do to stop it because they did not know how to use arms, they didn't have arms and they weren't able to protect themselves. So they ended up dead and that's a physical reality. Like I said, maybe a hundred years or a thousand years from now we'll have world peace and people will hardly ever use arms. It won't be a big deal but unfortunately that just ain't the world we live in and we have to be realistic. And again, the Constitution of the United States, the way it's written, it's written to protect the freedom of the individual. It's not about collectivism. It's about the individual. In other words, this has nothing to do with anybody else. It has nothing to do with government. It has nothing to do with the state. It has everything to do with the relationship between you and your creator. And the way the Constitution was written, it was written based upon the presence and the truth or the premise that each one of us is a divine being born into this world and our divine birthright is to pursue life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. We are guaranteed this and the Constitution is simply written in legal evidence of this fact. That's why and if you look at a typical democracy, which we are a constitutional republic. Now a democracy is basically mob rules. In other words, what the majority of the people want is what the law becomes. Well, the United States, the federal government was supposed to handle all of our foreign affairs dealing with other foreign governments. And our state governments were supposed to handle the interests of each individual state. We're not actually one country. We're actually a union of 50 individual countries in the United States. That's why each state has its own capital with its own state senate and its own state congress and its own governor. The governor in essence is the president of that particular state. And then you have city and you have local governments. Each state has its own state constitution. Now why is that? Because power was meant to be distributed across the whole entire country right down to the local government because 
somebody in the local government knows a hell of a lot more and is a lot more competent and able and knowledgeable to take care of things in your individual community that needs to be taken care of. Not some fucking nameless, faceless bureaucrat a thousand miles away who never comes to your city. He doesn't know about the playground that needs to be fixed. He doesn't need to know about the stadium that needs to be built. He doesn't understand what needs to be done on the roads. And the way our founding fathers founded the Constitutional Republic was to distribute as much power amongst the states as possible and only give the federal government a limited amount of power. And if you look at our – over the last 200 and something years that the United States of America has been around, every day laws are signed into law or bills are signed into law that take a little bit more of the power away from the states and give it to the federal government. The way the constitution is written, it says if it's not specifically in the constitution given to the federal government, it is automatically a right that the states have because by distributing the power amongst the states and the local governments versus concentrating all the power in one big central government, the likelihood of tyranny could be kept at bay for as long as possible and it could be as difficult as possible for little fucking busybodies who want to control anything and everything that each of us do, tell us what to do, how to eat, where to go, where we should work, how much we should earn. It keeps people like that at bay because at the end of the day, people, there's just evil people. They're tyrants. They think they know better what's best for you and for me than we know what's best for ourselves. And so to me, as a coach who teaches self-reliance, this is something that is really fucking important. And unfortunately, if you look at how people are educated today versus like when I was in school, I, most of these things are just not taught to people in, anymore. And so they're completely ignorant. Having state and local governments versus one big giant federal government protects the individual, the, in other words, our individual liberty better than any system of government. And people go, oh, I think socialism is great and we need to have it here. Well, how many socialist countries went to the moon? All I hear is crickets. Which country invented the microchip? Which country invented the light bulb? Which country has rockets that are now landing and returning back to Earth and doing it cheaper than anybody else? What about Facebook? What about Microsoft? Think about all the best. What about Apple? If the other systems of government, if the other countries around the world were so great and so much better than the way things are in the United States, why didn't they go to the fucking moon? We're the best, freest, and most successful in the history of mankind. It's just the way it is. The evidence is there until somebody comes along and shows me evidence of how much better another system with central control is it's just pointless to even have a discussion but at the end of the day people say well what about things like where all those kids were mowed down by i think his name was adam lanza the, the kid that was he was mentally ill i think he was like adhd had all kinds of problems well if we just ban guns and that shit won't happen well you have to Instead of trying to ban the tool and take away everybody's freedom, which is, comes from the creator anyways, it's not open. I'm not interested in debating that. I don't have to debate that. The creator gives me that right, so I don't have to argue over it. But if you really want to solve the problem, why do those things happen? Why does an idiot color his hair orange and go into a movie theater and mow a bunch of people down? What do you see the common thread? Mental illness. The kid had mental illness. He even wrote – information to a woman who was treating him, a psychologist, and basically said he was going to do this and nobody wanted to listen to her. And then of course after it came out, he was the guy, the guy was crying out for help. He was daring somebody to stop him and nobody did anything so he went through with it. You look at the kid, Adam Lanza, who mowed down all those children in that elementary school. Well, that was a gun-free zone. They had to wait until the police got there and once he saw the police drive up, that's when he shot himself and killed himself. He was suicidal. So if you look at the history of what happened, his mother actually used to work at the school. 
she used to work mentoring and teaching as she was like a teacher's aide if I remember right and every time he was sent off to a mental institution because I had a mother who was a psychotic schizophrenic and so I know all about mental, mental issues. She did not fucking like it when she was institutionalized. When she was medicated and she came out, she was like, yeah, I was totally loony and yeah, I should have been in there. But she always believed that if she took herself off her medication, gradually she'd be fine but she had a chemical imbalance. And that's the difference typically with psychotic schizophrenics versus people who are depressed or who are manic depressive. People that are depressed or manic depressive tend to recognize they have a problem and they're better on the medication so they'll take it. But people that are psychotic schizophrenics, they think everybody else is wrong and there's something wrong with them. And what I noticed with my own mother is every time we institutionalized her and Baker acted her and then the next time she went off her medication, she became even angrier, more hateful, more belligerent and this little tiny woman that was my mother Start talking about you know if your father shows his how his his face around her I'm gonna put a bullet in his brain I mean she became more belligerent and more hateful towards everybody in the family to the point where she just became not safe to be around her and so when the doctors would go and visit her they're like yeah she's totally crazy but she's really not a danger to herself or anybody and so they didn't do anything about it and so you look at a kid like Adam Lanza the one who kills all these kids. He's, his mother keeps locking him up in essence in a mental ward and he thinks there's nothing wrong with him. He thinks everything else is wrong with everybody. She was crying out for help. I'm losing my son. Somebody please help me. But nobody wanted to help her. There were no resources available to her. And in, in some way, he made a connection in his mind that the reason he didn't get the love that he wants from his mother is because she loved those children at that elementary school more than she loved her own son. So he became so angry that eventually he developed a belief system that justified murdering his own mother, shooting her in the face several times and destroying her head basically. And then he took the guns to the school to kill all those kids that he envied. They were getting all the love that he thought should have been given to him. And then he killed himself. And then yet people say, oh, are we going to ban larger capacity magazines? Just asinine fucking stupidity across the board and not doing anything to solve the problems. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. People want to argue, oh, we're going to take rights away. We're going to ban this. We're going to ban that. The bottom line is if you had a couple teachers there, they were concealed carry. They were responsible. They knew how to use. Like when my dad was going to high school, people had guns. They used to take them to school. They had gun racks in the back of their truck. It wasn't a big deal. Again, it was like a hammer or a nail. People didn't go around shooting each other. It wasn't like the wild, wild west, which idiots usually say, oh, if you had guns, everybody had guns in that movie theater, that idiot Joker guy that walked in and motor me down, there would have been a lot more people dead. No, a lot less people would have died and that fucker with the orange hair, he would have been dead and shot dead really quick. It's not a guarantee that people would have been able to take, take him out quick enough or that there would have been people in there that had concealed carry permits but at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter because in the United States of America, it is our divine birthright to keep and bear arms and it's a sacred duty. It's your responsibility and if you're a responsible person and you feel comfortable doing it, then you should go take a concealed carry class, get a permit, have a gun in your car or carry it with you just because you never know. Society needs that. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. This is the way the world is. And until evil is stamped out, until ignorance is stamped out, until there's no longer people in the world that want to take away your freedom and tell you how to live your life and basically stick their arm up your ass and try to make you into a little meat puppet for them, you got to be smart. you got to be self-reliant. And keeping, bearing arms, being responsible for them. It's like I was talking about, you know, I was over at my buddy's house when I was 16. He pulls out his dad's gun, starts loading up. He's like, hey, look at this. He's pointing at me and I grabbed the barrel of the gun. I said, dude, don't ever fucking point a gun at anybody because my father had taught me how to be responsible with it. If you're a responsible parent and you teach your kids to respect firearms and you teach them how to use them and how to be safe with them, when they encounter a stupid fuck like I did in high school who was a friend, you can teach them how to use it. You can teach them how to be 
responsible with it so he doesn't shoot himself or or your child or somebody else because he's a stupid idiot. Again, they're, just Google it. Go to Google and look for YouTube videos of people being stupid with guns. And it's just amazing. I, I watched a video a couple weeks ago of a, a guy that got a, you know explosive that you can buy in hardware stores and you shoot it with a gun. I guess the velocity of the bullet causes this stuff to explode and he put it on like propane tanks and a lawnmower and he was shooting it. I think it was with a, with a – I think it was an M4 he had as a matter of fact. And he was like 35 feet away and you're, it says you're supposed to be like 200 and something feet away from it. And this idiot gets real close because he's trying to shoot it and he f- hits it and it blows up and a fucking piece of shrapnel comes flying off and takes his leg right off. And you can hear him as he falls to the ground, oh, I just blew my leg off. There's a lot of stupid people in the world and the reality is if you're a smart parent, you're going to teach your kids how to use firearms. And what they should do when they encounter a fucking idiot because quite frankly, the world is full of idiots. The world is full of shitty parents who don't teach their their kids anything and they have guns laying around the house. So if you're responsible and you're smart and you want your children to be safe, you want them to be self-reliant, you teach them how to handle themselves when they encounter these situations instead of just pretending and hoping the world is full of sunshine and fucking roses and everything is going to be great and hunky-dory because that's the way it is. My father, my parents – just. You know, all the things I've talked about over the years about my family and how they're not perfect and they're fucked up, that's one thing they were really smart about and they were really great about. They taught us to be responsible with things like that. And I've got a few other quotes that I want to just go through here before I wrap it up. One of my favorite quotes, I don't know who this was from, but it was originally at one time attributed to Thomas Jefferson, but there's no evidence that he actually wrote it. But this is kind of something like he would say. And it says, the issue today is the same as it has been throughout all history, whether man shall be allowed to govern himself or be ruled by a small elite. And at the end of the day, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that's one of the things I'm so proud of about the country that I live in is that everything is geared to protect the freedom of the individual. When you look at the United States of America and what it does, we give away more money and we do more good, it's like when there's an earthquake or a calamity, we're the first ones to respond. We're the first ones to send financial aid. We give more money away to all over the world to help people than all the rest of the countries combined. And so when I see people saying, oh, the United States is this and that's that, until I see another country being more generous and spending more money than the United States does, I don't want to fucking hear it. Because the evidence simply does not support ignorant fools. Here's another one. This is by Thomas Paine. The supposed quietude of a good man allures the ruffian, while on the other hand, arms, like law, discourage and keep the invader and the plunderer in awe and preserve in the world as well as property. For while avarice and ambition have a place in the heart of man, the weak will become a prey to the strong. So if you got a guy that's a big ass bodybuilder and he goes and kicks the door down and you got a little old granny and she's got a little revolver, she's going to fucking drop his ass. And one of the interesting things like during World War II, Admiral Yamamoto who was in charge of the Japanese Imperial Army, one of the things that he told uh, – what's his name? Uh, Tojo, the guy that was running the war for Japan. He said the last thing we should ever do because he went to school over here in the United States. He was educated in the Ivy League universities in the United States and he was the architect behind the Pearl Harbor attack on December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And for those of you who are like, what's Pearl Harbor? Read some fucking history. Put the goddamn Xbox controller down and read some fucking history and educate yourself. But what he said was we should never invade the United States. Because there would be a gun behind every blade of grass. And just like some of the great Sun Tzu quotes, if you want peace, prepare for war. If you want war, prepare for peace. That's not the exact quote from Sun Tzu, but it's pretty close to it. And that's why. As the old saying goes, walk softly but carry a big fucking stick because people will not fuck with you 
if they know, you know how to defend yourself. And so when you have the strongest, best prepared, best equipped, best trained military in the world, nobody will fuck with you. If you look at what happened after World War II or after World War I, most of Europe disarmed themselves. And so the Nazis just rolled right over the French. They went right around the, the Maginot Line and they pretty much conquered most of Europe. What was one of the first things the Nazis did when they got in power? They disarmed the people. Hmm, interesting. Now why is that? You disarm the people, they can't resist. Our founding fathers looked at that. They historically looked at what happened to every country. And when people had no ability to resist their government, tyranny happened. There's another quote. This is from Andrew Fletcher in 1698. The possession of arms is the distinction of a free man from a slave. Again, if you want to be completely self-reliant to live your life in your own way, you have to be able to defend yourself and your family. And at the end of the day, whether you like it or not or you accept the responsibility or not, as an American, you're supposed to be responsible. You're part of the militia. Now, you can delegate that authority and say, I don't like guns. I don't feel safe with them. That's fine. But you don't have the right to point the finger and say all the rest of us need to give up our guns because you're too lazy, too weak, or too much of a pussy to be responsible for yourself and your family. And that's reality. Here's another one. This is by Benjamin Franklin. Any society that would give up a little liberty to gain a little security will deserve neither and lose both. I mean, you look at in Europe now, you got all these migrants and you got ISIS that said, we sent 5,000 of our trained fighters hidden amongst the refugees. I mean, the d- different defense and law enforcement, they're pretty fucking good. But most of Europe is disarmed. And you've already seen what happened in Paris when nobody has any weapons or ability to defend themselves. I mean, do you really want to take the risk that 5,000 of those fighters that law enforcement is going to catch every single one? I mean obviously they can't. They've already proven they can't. Just look what happened again, what happened in Paris during the end of last year. That's just reality. It sucks that shit like that still happens this day and age, especially in a modern society. I mean here in the United States, we've got no fucking walls on our border and we've got people just flowing across the border. They're finding prayer rugs, they're finding Korans, they're finding those skull caps, they're finding jihadi literature. I mean, we don't know who these people are. We don't know where they are. They're just coming across the border. Now, law enforcement's really good. They're rolling out, I think, just last year alone, I think they rolled up somewhere around 100 different people. Again, things like San Bernardino and other places, the guy that, uh, what was his name, the, the guy that was in the army. The radical is you know, guy that shot and killed a bunch of people at uh, was it Fort Hood I think it was. Everybody was disarmed at the base. You look at you know was it last year the recruiting station. Guys goes in drives through the gate. You know nobody had any weapons. I think one guy had actually had a pistol. He went out and got in his car, and he shot back at this dude. But I mean having our military guys not being allowed to carry firearms around it's fucking asinine stupidity. Any politician that advocates that or anybody in the chain of command that advocates that, they should be fucking fired for being incompetent and stupid. That's just the reality. Here's another one. Alexander Hamilton. Little more can be reasonably aimed at with respect to the people at large than to have them properly armed and equipped. Again, One of the reasons why the Japanese were too scared to invade the United States, the mainland United States, is because there would be a gun behind every blade of grass. Walk softly but carry a big stick. If you get rid of your big stick, then somebody else who has a big stick can come along and kick your fucking ass and make you do whatever you want. And the last one, this is from James Madison, also one of our founding fathers. The Constitution preserves the advantage of being armed, which Americans possess, over the people of almost every other nation where the governments are afraid to trust the people with arms. At the end of the day, this is not something that's up for debate. This is something 
that is a divine right from the creator. The Constitution guarantees this. You can bitch about it all you want. You can complain about it all you want. You can abdicate your responsibility all you want. But at the end of the day, you do not have the right to advocate for or to try to take my freedom or my divine right because it's not between you and me. It's not between you and me and the state. It is between me as a divine sovereign being where all divine beings have an, a spiritual experience. At the end of the day, this divine right comes from the creator. It comes from the Lord. Whether you believe anything spiritual or not, it doesn't matter. The United States of America was founded on the founding principle that the individual is a divine being born onto this planet as a free sovereign being that is deemed responsible enough and deserving enough to keep and bear arms. That's the way it is. If you want to solve the problems of the gun crime and all of these things, you got to have responsible people with guns and you got to go after the causes of this violence instead of treating the symptom which banning high capacity magazines, banning certain guns or having certain areas that are gun free zones, that doesn't do anything to address the fucking problem. If the so called leaders that we have were really interested in solving the problem, they'd be looking at why do people – there was actually an article in Mother Jones, I think it was last year and after the Columbine massacre in the 90s, law enforcement was like, what can we do to stop these mass shootings before they happen? And they've been really effective. There's a great article that I'll actually post on this article on my website where you can go check it out where law enforcement already has a solution to the mass shooter problem. And they've caught a lot of people that would have become the next – what's his name? Dylan Klebold and the other – I don't remember his fucking name – that are able to stop these guys, get them into therapy, get them into counseling, in some cases get them on medication and show them love, show them the connection that they're missing so they make other healthy choices before they ever get to the point where they pull a gun and start shooting other defenseless human beings. Law enforcement already has an effective solution that is working. So let's support our law enforcement. Let's give them the resources that they need to help these people because these people do obvious things that make them stand out. But when you have politicians or people in the media with an agenda, they're not focusing on solving the problem. They're only focused on imposing their tyrannical ideology on all the rest of us through dishonest means. And that's something that I personally, as a descendant of all of my fam generations of my family that have put their fucking asses on the line for this country for generations to protect this freedom, this is why I'm talking about this because this is important to me. This is my way of serving. I'm a peaceful warrior. Any great warrior, they don't like to fight. When I was young, one of the things my dad said to me is this. I hope you never have to fight in a war someday. And he told me a lot of the stories. I heard all the horrible stories of what my uncle saw when he was in Vietnam. I heard the horrible stories about my grandfather who was in the Navy. I heard the horrible stories that my other grandfather, my mother's father, what he saw when he liberated one of the death camps. He saw what the Nazis did to the Jews. He saw it. He smelled it. He was around it. It was fucking atrocious what humanity tolerated back then and I'm just doing my part during my time on earth here to make sure you have everything you need. You have every resource you need to protect yourself, to protect your family and to create the life and lifestyle that you want because at the end of the day, it's your divine birthright. But if you don't understand how it's granted to you, how it's given to you and why it's given to you and why you have certain rights, then you're in a position where you're ignorant about it and eventually in time, it will get legislated away. And I want to see the world prosper and get closer and closer to a point where everybody has everything they want. Guys can get the girls they want. Girls can get the guys they want. People can have great relationships. They can have great careers. They can have great businesses. They can have great lives. 
have live in great houses, great community key, communities, great friends. Someday we will have peace on earth. We are not there yet. Like I said, it may be a hundred years, it may be in twenty years, it may be in a thousand years. When people are not, when human beings get into a state where they're in survival mode, that's when they resort to criminality and thieving and stealing. But when people have an abundance of everything they need, they have no reason to take from other people or impose their will or to be tyrannical. That's definitely something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help personally, go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website and follow the instructions for booking whichever coaching option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.